Today's episode has a few naughty words in it. My dad thought I should just let you know that. For reasons that will become very clear in the next one and a half minutes or so, I've been speaking to Gemma, and um, Gemma um, said that you have this kind of post-match bath routine. In fact, you were there at the same time, it's just before she went home. <laughs> so I can't believe you have a post. The day after a wedding, ladies and gentlemen, Kev will go to the bathroom on the Sunday morning, okay, and he will he will nab the bath before the rest of the family have a chance to do their ablutions. Absolutely. And he'll sit there and he'll demand a coffee is brought up for him. Well, demand's not really the right word. Request. When you, when you text, <laughs> bring us up a coffee. I always put please at the end. <laughs> and he sits there in the bath for how many hours, did you say? Two hours? Oh, well, on a Sunday morning, less, because um, cause we, we go to church then eventually. Yeah. But um, if, it's, if it's, yeah, I mean, I've been known to, to do, uh, I think, about four and a half hours, five do, hours in the bath. Do you bath. drink beer in the bath? Uh, yeah, of no, course. That's not right. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah, something yeah. wrong about drinking beer. You have to empty the water quite often, though, because otherwise it gets a little bit. <laughs> oh, I don't want to know anymore. Now. <laughs> the Fuji cast. <laughs> Just before you start getting <laughs> disgusting. Right, uh, this week, thanks to our friends at Simpler Straps for letting us give away a military grade, rugged camera strap each to our favourite email question of the week. Go to simpler.us. Uh, .us. Uh, simpler s i m p l r dot u s and you can see their amazing range that they have there uh, there are your questions about anything Fujifilm or photography related technical artistic business personal uh, and you can send them in by the way I've noticed a, a few questions have been floating in through the comments yes uh, we should actually make that clear that we'd rather have them by email yeah so uh, you know if you're going to comment on the website um, that's absolutely fine but try and uh, it's easier for us I should say if the comments are just about the, the episode you listen to if you're asking us a question either use the contact form on the website which sends an email direct to us or just send the email to click at fujicast.co.uk uh, uh, and it's not us being um, awkward it's just simply uh, much easier to collate the questions and everything that yeah. way and we don't want to miss any that's no the most absolutely yep. but we've been quite good because I've mopped up a few that did come through the comments channel and we'll make sure we get to those um, oh yes we have the self-indulgent moment and then we'll also hear from our wives now it's a mini series that we've called photography the other half um, and part one of two today in which I talked to Gemma which now the Gemma bit makes sense why we were talking to her a moment ago that's that's Kev's wife obviously Yeah. about living with a photographer and being in a photography business or partnership and if if you're out there wondering well that's a strange mini series maybe even a t- touch self-indulgent well we wanted to address two subjects really one for those about to take money for this job if you like where your partner may be wondering what's this all about what is he or she doing why are they making that leap the best person really to 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 ask and we thought you know is the person that affects the other side of the relationship and and secondly really for those in the job sometimes struggling to understand what the other person's thinking whilst you're caught up in this sort of pre-apocalyptic artistic meltdown we thought it might be interesting to have a no holds barred chat with the other half so it's a two-parter first week it's going to be kev's wife Gemma. Next week, it's going to be my wife, Sam. And there, there's a logistic thing to this as well, um, that before we um, before we went on air today, I, I recorded my interview with Gemma. That's why she was here. She's gone home now. Mm. Um, and um, Kev won't actually hear anything she says about him till the episode airs live. Now, the week after that... Kev's- I can guess a few things. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you can. <laughs> oh, that sounds even worse. <laughs> the week after, Kev's going to be interviewing Sam, and uh, I'm going to have somebody else, I think, um, edit the programme for the, for that week so that I can't hear it before <laughs> it goes out. That's- I've got some great questions <clears throat> for Sam. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Right, questions. Talking of questions, thank you for yours this week that you've been sending in. Um, You launch, Kev. Go on. Okay, so uh, first question from Esteban Arthur. Uh, I have just taken photography up as a hobby this year and been watching Kevin's YouTube channel, which leads me to the Fujicast. Having watched and read reviews of many different entry-level cameras and their associated brands, I settled for the X-T100. Good choice. 
What drew you both to Fuji? And as Fuji lovers, what do you think sets Fuji apart from other brands? And finally, what's your thoughts on the XT100? So a couple of questions there. Mm. Actually, quite interesting questions, I think. Um, I'll answer the one about the XT100 first, if I may, because I don't think you've properly ever used it. XT100 is a kind of more entry-level type camera, like articulating screen, good for it's the one i used when we went oh, to brighton you last used year. that last yeah. year in brighton didn't you um for filming you were hoping that was g- going to become your main blogging vlogging, vlogging yeah camera. and actually it probably would be okay um it's just that it's just another camera and you know it's still not you know what we all want what we all really 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 want as the um <laughs> spice girls spice girls would want to say <laughs> is something like an x70 yeah. with a fully articulating screen so you can face it to yourself yeah. with x trans 4 sensor that's that's it that's what I'm 4k and 25 frames per second and we'd like it by tomorrow uh, and tomorrow would be great yeah absolutely so the xt 100 is, a, is a, a fine little camera um you know it's got it's got like kind of fully automatic modes and everything I think I don't know how much it is but I remember when I had hold of it it was you know it's, it's like half the price of an iPhone or mm. something so yeah. Uh, yeah really good choice uh, especially if you're just entering the uh, Fujifilm world um, and my my take on what brought me to Fujifilm um, essentially I th- said this a million times I think was the original X100 I saw an advert for it I bought it um, I nearly threw it out the window several times yeah. um, but then I learned to love it and the rest is history essentially and, and I've just kind of went down that route thereafter could have been any camera uh, it just happened to be an X100 um, you know and there we go and you we've, we've had a similar um uh, chat about this, haven't we? On the on the on the Fuji cast very early on, mm-hmm. um, I came to it in a very similar way. I'd seen, I think, an advert for it. I, there was a bit, bit of noise going on about this. Um, did you have the original X100? I did, I did, <sighs> I did, and I didn't like it at all. No. Um, it didn't focus quickly. It was awful in backlight. Mm-hmm. Didn't think the quality was very good. It was fringing galore. Mm. Uh, just I didn't like it. And they did actually correct a lot of that mm, with firmware, yeah, but but yeah. you're right. I remember the first time I I vividly remember that first wedding I took it to, <clears throat> and I was like, "What the heck? This is this is but, like the pictures were, were great. Yeah. The ones that were in focus, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but there was something about it that that made me uh, persevere. But I didn't persevere as well as you did, obviously, because yeah. I stayed with Canon for for many years, and it's only in the last year that I've I've, if you like, properly crossed over. Um, that's not to say that I wouldn't use a Canon or Nikon. I mustn't say Nikon. I got told off for that yeah. in the comment. Um, it w- it's not to say I wouldn't use any of those brands. It's just that mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's been a very gradual transition to, to Fuji for me. And I like the size. I like the fact now with the new sensor, I think the images look great. Yeah. Um, all my worries that I had about uh, image quality have disappeared. Is the focus as quick? No, I don't think it is. I do think I, I do I do think I miss a few things that I I didn't used to miss because um, I'm thinking oh over there quick and the camera hasn't started up because I haven't been able to lift it straight to my eye like you could with a DSLR and go bang yeah but um, you know everything I, I I read something the other day about um, about camera systems whatever you choose there's always going to be a compromise mm-hmm. and I felt yeah that compromise was fine yeah it's interesting that esteban uses the word fuji lovers um because i think that mistakenly a lot of people think that you know me as an ambassador at least uh, you know it's it's kind of you know i mean i'm ingrained in that that brand but as i've said before and i've said to fujifilm many times that if you know if something comes along that i think is better for my clients because they're the ones that pay me then then i would change so it's i do love fujifilm as a company i love their ethos i've met many of them and i love what they do for photographers for sure but ultimately at the end of the day it's a tool it's a camera um you know i put interesting i put a picture on instagram this week of my camera bag for a wedding <laughs> my word uh, the comments i got they were like what on earth yeah. they're all beaten up and ban- bashed about and uh you know but that's because they're just tools well it's interesting you should say that because the, um, the, the this question from marcus in leeds uh, addresses exactly that your camera bag and actually, it's got a. It's actually got a title: Kev's camera bag carnage. <laughs> Kev, it's been well documented that you tend to lob your kit in your camera bag. Where on earth did you get that idea? How do your lenses and cameras stand up to this abuse? 
do you have clear filters on your lenses to protect them <laughs> or have they been sturdy enough to cope with being mashed around in your bag there's a second question but deal with that one first uh, honestly i have no filters i don't put uh, lens hoods on Surely them these things are scratched to- uh, they're scratched yeah, yeah but but you know what the um the the, the the lenses i use the most are the 56 1.2 23 1.4 and those lenses are what mm, six seven years old i suppose yeah. uh, and i've only had one of them i've not replaced them and yes they are scratched and but they absolutely work fine there's nothing my cameras are all scratched and rubbed about a bit but you know i i i i, I do just prefer to be able to put things in. I, you know in fairness i do tend to just use two cameras two lenses at a wedding so whilst the cameras are in the bag yeah. they might be rattling around in the bag in the car and stuff but at the wedding they're on me um <laughs> the other cameras are just spares that just kind of sit in the car in yeah. the bag so uh yeah so yeah i mean You're still not thought about dividers <gasps> no don't say the v you word dividers don't say the v word what do you do with those dividers you've uh, bought a hundred thousand camera bags <laughs> well, well you must have a pile of dividers somewhere no i throw them in the divider bin do you <laughs> they're gone they're gone and he had a second part of the question um i currently own an xt3 and an x100s i'm considering trading in the x100s for a, for a second hand x pro 2 problem is i love the x100s but i think the x pro 2 would serve me better in my wedding startup business you both use these cameras so i'd like your opinion if possible you know what i would say always 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 make sure you have at least one camera that you really love using Mm. and and that's mostly for sunday to friday so when you're not at a wedding you want something you can pick up enjoy run around with take pictures of your family and stuff and if that is the x100s perfect then there you go keep it uh yeah x pro 2 x xt3 x 100s is a good combination um x pro 2 you may end up you know not using it as much from a personal point of view and i think that's imperative always have a personal camera that you love that's very good advice i think i'd say the same thing actually i love the x pro 2 but mm, I, I think so the I. the x 100s used with your xt3 when i shot that um we've come back to it a couple of times but that that funeral for that little lad mm. I used um, an X100F mm. and an X-T2. The, I don't think the 3 was out then. Or was mm, it? No, no, no. Whatever I, I had. I think yeah. X-T2, X-T2 and X100F. And um, it felt a perfect combo to me. Mm. And then the X100F I use as a private camera as well. Yeah. Is that your private camera? Yeah, mostly. I, I, the X100F is is such a good camera. Uh, such a good camera. Mm. Uh, you know, the... <clears throat> It, it's just great and mm. what i love about it is the versatility the f- single fixed lens you know it, it's rugged it stands up to a lot it's it's you know it's like in terms of weather sealing you you, you can't change the lens or anything so you're not going to no. get any dust or anything in the sensor it's just a great great the camera anything i did buy i think my one's down there yeah I, I bought the little um protector hood that goes on the front of the um yeah because i'm always really worried that, that that lens element is right at the front and so easy to scratch yeah yeah i mean i i um the one i have is a square hood it's called square hood by a swedish company called right. squarehood.se yeah um and i do occasionally use that also but generally i take all of the uh, what they call the vanity ring which i'm unscrewing off your yeah, camera yeah, right i can now. see you doing it now i take that off yeah um and put that in my uh, next to my dividers <laughs> and put that next to the, the dividers and you just then, have it like that yeah aren't mostly. you worried about that front element being being scratched or oh you know what finger I, I marks on it i mean i do whatever. actually I, I i have the um the, the hood the little round metal hood thing that comes with it i've got that but that um, spends its life falling off does it mine doesn't okay um i don't know why but anyway uh, mine is bent though so i don't know whether that's part of that reason <laughs> it's, and thus um the the proof that of course you need to look after your stuff in the bag if it's bent that's because it's being being pummeled by all the lenses and cameras you throw in on, on top uh, of it you know i'm feeling like i i, I feel like I, I i'm a bit of a a, a joke in terms of the cameras and everything <laughs> but i'm looking at your camera right i'm looking at your x100f it doesn't now. look like it's been used and, and i know say. you've made beautiful pictures with it because yeah. i've seen it but part of me just wants to like scratch it a bit yeah, yeah. i just want to throw it at the wall or something you know make it look a little bit like it's been loved yeah you want me to do that for you no thank you i can do it no thank you okay 
There you go. <laughs> go on, you do a question next. Um, okay, so this is from... Put my hood back on it as well. <laughs> well, that might take some time. Uh, <laughs> I'll do that in a second. Um, this is from Wayne Richards. Uh, hi, chaps. A few questions I'd be interested in your take on. Number one, when putting together a portfolio of your work, what should you consider or include? Should you uh, show just your best images, however unconnected they are, or should you show more extended project-based work? I'm guessing the answer is probably a bit of both. Number two, what are some ways to get honest and meaningful critique of your images? Is it via a portfolio review? He's attended one of the Folio Friday sessions at the Photographer's Gallery, oh, right. uh, which apparently are a free monthly event. Yeah, um, they sound good. Yeah, they do sound good. I have never didn't even know that happened. Um, that sounds very good. I'd be interested in your views on photography collectives. I know Kevin is a member of the Kage Collective, and I'm a member of the Fight Club Collective, spelled P-H-I-G-H-T. Yeah, While you're talking about that, I'm going to look it up. I wondered if you had any advice on being in part of a collective. Okay, so number one, um, portfolio of work. It's interesting because I, I, right this second, I'm going through a mammoth struggle with um, this stuff and in terms of my website and everything. And I, I suppose from my point of view, uh, and, and yours probably, Neil, as, as wedding photographers, the portfolio is always going to be about that. Yeah. Um, and I actually believe that you shouldn't just show your absolute best pictures because people want to see and need to see real pictures that you're likely to take at their weddings um you know i have a featured section which is is kind of my my preferred uh, blog post if you like um but really on my website I, i've been going through it recently and on my my two portfolio pages and my style page i've got hundreds of pictures you know and some of them are not necessarily particularly m- mind-blowing um but i think it helps you know um now i don't know about rook wayne in terms of uh you know whether it's weddings or just general portfolio of work if it's if you're in a commercial sp- uh, space and you're trying to get commercial clients then yes absolutely you're just your best work and something that um shows the uh, the target audience what you're capable of doing um critique you know what Absolutely, you know that photo Friday thing sounds folio Friday thing sounds perfect. Um, you know, I like. Uh, I've I've said this to Neil a couple of times. We've never really done it, but w- you know, we we should critique each other's work. Uh, we so should spend Friday, a, an Friday hour or something. Yeah, um, and uh, if you're critiquing your own work, by the way, always do it upside down. Yeah, <laughs> just like your back to front. Thing. It is upside down, back to front. The best way right. to critique. Okay. Um, you know, I, I think I think it's Joe Cornish, the landscape photographer. Did he say that? He no, no, no. But I think he he actually edits his images upside down as well. Um, you'll see more. You'll see more of the the problems in an image if they're upside down. I think we've talked about that yeah. as well. Um, and the Kage Collective and Fight Club Collective. I love the sound of that. Fight. P H I G H T. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I enjoy being part of the cargo collective i think it's a good thing uh it's a non-commercial thing we don't make any money from it you challenge each other every month we which do, is a good thing we do challenge we have a um we use slack as a our, our online kind of yeah. forum which is great actually um we do challenge each other and it does make us do stuff although occasionally we you know like last month i, I skipped out um but yeah it's great and yeah, it's a worldwide thing so you know we, we kind of get to know a little bit more about cultures and what have you um but yeah i mean it's time thing isn't it yeah. you know I, i'm not a member of the Kage collective to uh, n- no wedding client's going to book me because i'm a member of the Kage collective i'm a member of the Kage collective because it pushes me and i enjoy it and that's the key thing well you ha- you have done weddings um and commissions for people that um that that do see your um Kage collective work haven't you oh yeah i mean i do get quite a lot of inquiries from other photographers yeah. to shoot weddings for yeah. sure um but they're the ones that are likely to see yeah not, i don't not general clients i don't no, think no. generally it's just because of the Kage collective right um i've got a question here which I'm, I'm going to save for a moment social media journey sort of topic if you like um and uh, and we this isn't anything to do with weddings um th- this is to do with how you set yourself up in social media world if you're thinking, right, I need a YouTube channel, I need Instagram, I need this, I need that. So I'm going to come back for that question because, first of all, I, uh, we're going to take this break out now for for the the other half. What, what do you think Gemma said about you? Nice stuff only? or uh, Did you tell her to bear her soul and be absolutely truthful? No, I told her to be truthful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's it. I have no idea. I'm quite nervous, I must admit. 
So. Bearing in mind, I, do you know what I feel like right now? Well, go on. I feel like the groom at a wedding and the best man's about to stand up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, have that, I have that butterfly going on in me. Except yeah. Gemma's not two sheets to the wind. Yeah, true. Drunk. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, maybe that know. would have been a good way yeah. to do it. <laughs> it is nearly 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> That's true. It's, it's about <laughs> over the yard arm or whatever they Gin say. o'clock. Gin o'clock. <laughs> right. So um, we thought we'd. Uh, this is Kevin's idea, and I thought it was a, a, a great. So when I say we, it was Kevin's idea. Uh, that we should talk to our other halves to find out what living with a photographer is like. But uh, so that it's not t- too self-indulgent. Um, the, the other the other real reason for it is to find out what that other half said when we went back with our idea of opening up a photographic business when actually both of us were working in reasonably well-paid jobs that were pretty secure, um, certainly at that time. And then we made this decision to go to take this big left turn at the traffic lights. So the first week, it's going to be me talking to Gemma. This was an interview recorded before we went on air with this podcast today. So Kev knows nothing about um, what's about to happen. And he won't do until he hears it go out. Because I'm just going to press pause now. And we're we're going to record the second half. And so Kev will only hear this next week. But this is my chat to Gemma. So, Gemma, I want to start from... We've talked about this on the podcast before, and he's told us this story. So um, I realise that listeners may well have heard this story, but I want it to come from you. The day that Kev came back home, he'd read... I think he'd read a magazine on a train or something. Yeah, right. Yeah, Yeah. that's right. And he said, right, Gemma, I am going to become a wedding photographer. Now, consider that he was working in the city, well-paid job. Yep. I know it was a well-paid job. Yep. Um... And he was he was willing to risk all that for something that you didn't know anything about. Yeah, and he always gets me. He twice he's done it to me now. Gets me postnatally exhausted with a small baby. Um, oh yeah, you had Rosa. You had Rosa. Yeah, just she, had Rosa. Yeah, she was tiny. So I was, so I'm on maternity leave, thinking oh, I've got nine months off, and then I've got my job back in London, and we live in Wiltshire, and not sure how that's all going to pan out. And he just rocks up and we were sat outside and he just said, you know what, I'm, I am I just really want to be a photographer. And I just thought, shit. Right, so I now am going to go back to work, <laughs> support us while he fannies around with gadgets. That's oh, that's honestly what I thought. Yeah. I thought, oh my God. You didn't he's, think it would last. He's having, a, he's having a midlife. You know, we've had a baby and he's gone. <laughs> yeah. The second time he did it to me, we got a new BMW in the studio. Yeah. But... um. Yeah, the first time was this whole kind of you know I'm going to be a photographer. Uh, and what I really, did you say that night? Did you say no? You're not. No. Let's let's have a glass of wine um, and, and 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 we'll sort of we'll, let's be sensible about this. He'd work he'd work for himself for 15 years. I knew he could run a business, mm. and I knew he was a hard worker, and I knew he was a grafter. So I knew that he wasn't just going to be a fly by night. But I just didn't think you could earn any money out of photography, mm. and you can't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I just, you know, I, I just. And the days I, of Porsche's gone. Yeah, yeah, it's all done, <laughs> done, dusted. But yeah, it was, it was. I was really worried. And then I remember about a week later when I'd been trying to sort of say to him, "Well, you know, maybe do it as a hobby a bit more first And and he just looked at me and he was really, "I'm going to do it. You don't believe me. My mom doesn't believe me. You know, the family doesn't believe me. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it." So he made this big announcement to the whole family as well, had he? Yeah. Right. Yeah, and everybody... Do you think that's what committed him? No, I just think he's that sort of person. Right. I think he was... He really wanted to do it. You know, that... that uh, He tells the story about reading that magazine article. Uh, but that really was his kind of epiphany. Right. Looking back, he had he decided, that's what I'm going to do. And, you know, and he's grafted and I take my hat off to him. So if he came home tomorrow and said, listen, Gemma, I'm going to be a marine biologist. It wouldn't surprise me. Right, OK. There, there's a few times over the last couple of months because it's been tough right in the industry yeah. where he said oh, I'm going to be a milkman and I've said yeah crack <laughs> on <laughs> but but yeah no I think he's I think he, he will always do photography in some guys his mm. his he needs that creative hang on a minute this is this is interesting you think that he won't always be a photographer no, I think he will always do some like something with photography but mm. I, I would never stake my you know mortgage on the fact that 
he, he will always do what he's doing now. He's, he's really good at evolving. Marine biology is maybe not so far around the corner. Who knows? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Milkman. Maybe. Milkman, yeah. So, all right, let, let's, let's take the story a little bit further. So he'd, he'd come home, he'd announced this. What was the time period between him uh, pretty much packing up his job in, in London and moving into photography how, how how did that transition i know how it worked for, for us and my wife sam's going to talk privately to kevin and tell him that story but what was that what was that transition like and how long did it take um bearing in mind that i was sleep deprived at the time so everything was a bit of a blur but i think so say if he he made this call in like the September, he still had some work for existing clients in his business that he was running to 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 finish off. So he ran that with the photography business alongside it and kind of started mm. getting his website up and, you know, did a couple of freebies for friends and um, one of my friend's sisters and that kind of thing. And But it was pretty quick. It was pretty quick. And his, his, then he was out doing his first paid wedding. And I just remember him coming back and just being like, you did it. You did it, shit. You know, it's just absolutely incredible. And then it just snowballed from there. I mean, I say snowballed. It's been 10 years. It's been... But yeah. he was successful reasonably quickly, he was wasn't successful, he? Successful, yeah, you know, yeah. really quickly. And I, he, he got the bookings in, that's for sure. Yeah, he really did. And he had this... Um, do you think that's sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but, but uh, which I always get told off for on this podcast. <laughs> no, go. But but do you think that's because of his work before that he he knew how to um, optimize his website? He had a he had a leg up above, I think, other photographers that had been in it so much longer. Oh yeah, without a shadow of a doubt, and he would say that himself. I think two things really. Uh, one that he did understand how to build a website how to get himself out there how to promote himself he understands about marketing he understands about branding and all of that kind of thing that was already there he absolutely won't work for nothing I mean you know he's done lots of freebie stuff and he's done lots of but he's not going to run a business so that he earns minimum wage working all the hours you know so He was like, if I'm going to charge, you know, he will look at his pricing structure. He has a database which will literally, or he used to, I don't know if he does anymore, which will break down, you know, as a as a solicitor would, what he's oh, he still earning. Does. He yeah, still does, yeah. What he's yeah. earning per sort of half an hour, yeah. you know. So he's really, yeah, he, he's pretty serious about, about getting that bit right. So, yeah, for sure that helped. But he, but also... Um, I remember he 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 was on a, like a private forum at the time and he invited a load of these people, all photographers, up to where we live to go out for a curry. And we sat in this curry restaurant and we were at different tables and I'd never met these people before. And uh, and I said, oh, um, so who is like, there's like 15 of them. Like, who's the who's the kind of like big wig here? Like who are the really successful ones? Yeah. And they all just looked at me like I was, and they went, uh, Kev? And I felt like such an idiot because I felt like I I, I didn't even realise that he'd been as successful as he had as quickly as he had. Mm. So, so we're yeah. talking months at that stage. Yeah, or eighteen months. Okay. Yeah, eighteen months. Yeah. What did you What did you honestly think of um, of his photographs? I mean, I, I I I'll say this with a caveat that yeah. the last year's ex weddings conference, he showed pictures from his first wedding. And and he set out to show how bad they were, yeah, and how how awful he thought he was right at the start, yeah. Okay. And and to be fair, there were some stinkers in there, yeah, yeah. As we yeah. as we, we all would have. Yeah. Now, I remember my my dear dad, as I was wanting to to work in initially broadcasting, would always tell me, "Son, you sound great." Now, and I know it was awful. What did you do for Kev? Were you honest? And what was his photography like? Uh, I am, I am honest with him. He he he. If it, he doesn't show me everything, no. But um, then, when when he started, when he started, hmm. do you remember giving him feedback? Uh, yeah, I am pretty honest with him. Um, you've got to be a bit careful of a creative ego, but no, I am honest with him, and I am honest with him now. What I find really hard about looking at his work, and I still do, um, weddings or street or the kids or whatever is um because I've known him over half my life I know his emotions and mm. because he shoots I think his real skill is that emotional like he'll pick up on the emotion of, of, mm. of something just better than anyone I think um and it, I find it 
emotionally quite hard to look at his photographs sometimes do you? yeah i do i do like he he um obvious things like you know he's made me photo montages of the children which i have to be in a very good mental state to sit and look <laughs> at but also i can look at he pulls oh, at your heartstrings with those oh my god but it just even weddings or um of people i just don't know yeah. particularly if if he shows me the whole wedding all the way through i'll just be gone and it's a lot to do with my connection to him and the fact that i know him and i know what he's thinking when he's taking certain shots so Although, I mean, I don't know anything about photography technically. I have a, probably quite a good artist eye. So I will be honest with him. And in the early days, yeah, uh, definitely. <laughs> so you get quite emotional looking at Kev's pictures? Oh, yeah, horribly emotional. Mm. Yeah, and listening to the podcast and anything <laughs> he does. I'm super proud. So I get very, uh, yeah, I'm very invested in it. Obviously, it's my life so, as well. So how many years are we down the, the line now for Kev? He did tell us last week. Me and him? No, no, no. Him, photography. photography. Well, 11. Is it 11? Coming up 11, yeah. During that 11 years, has there, has there ever been moments where you thought, why, why, did we, why did we leave what we were doing to do this? Because there's been up and downs. Oh, my God. Yeah, there has absolutely. We've been through one recession. Yeah. We've got this, if you, if you want to call it Brexit thing or whatever this current malaise is in the... In, 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 in the business sector yeah. it's been it has been super tough and you know without doubt the sacrifices that we've made as a family for it you know what you know 50 50 weekends a year where you don't the kids don't see their dad um you know nobody else does his accounts or his admin or, or anything like that so it's a full-on does he do full-time. everything yeah wow yeah yeah, we have had um, periods where I've tried to go and help him, but yeah. I just end up picking well, up the dry cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has at times. You've joined the business, haven't you? Yeah. What, what, what was what was the reasoning behind that? Because he just needs help. You know, it just gets too much. And now he's he's learnt when he can pass things off to me, like driving to Reading yesterday to collect a camera and things like that. I'll, I'll happily do, but. To be honest, so much of it is in his head. Mm. You know, I've t- I've said to him, you know, teach me how to edit, teach me how to uh, wh- whatever, you know, I'll do your accounts. But it's all in his head and he quite likes that control. So that's a difficult thing. When the, when the hard times... Okay, I know mm. Kev can be... Um, a miserable git. What, <laughs> he does say these smiles. What's his favourite phrase? 35 smiles a 35 month. 35 smiles a month, yeah. that's it. I mean, he does wear his heart on his sh- on his sleeve and when you get to know him okay yeah and um he he can he he can go into certainly he can go into himself quite a lot is that the right phrase yeah yeah what's he like at those times to live with hideous hideous Uh, yeah he he jokes i think i was listening to a podcast where he's talking about the last ex weddings conference you know and saying you know we're just out of counseling now (laughs) uh yeah, it's hard when he's really stressed about something mm. or, um, you know, that kind of imposter syndrome. You know, he yeah, suffers from that yeah. really badly. Mm. So I remember he went out to Argentina to do something, some speaking thing, and it was quite a big deal. And, you know, I'm t- you're talking like 10 hours worth of us exchanging messages of me going, it's going to be fine, and him going, I don't even know why I'm here. I've, you know, everyone else's photographs are amazing and mine, oh my God. So he, so that is, is dealing with that is probably the toughest thing. So how, how do you support him at those moments? Um, how do I support him? I think you can't just say, oh no, your photos are brilliant, darling. What, what are you talking about? Um, it's just knowing him and saying, you know, everyone feels like this. Everyone thinks that about you. You know, the, the people people think your photographs are brilliant. You think theirs are. Wh- whatever it is, uh, just keep talking to him, really. And also tell him to just take one step at a time. Yeah. He is one of these people who's... He, he needs to fix every problem straight away and he's on to the next thing, he's on to the next thing. And it's like, step back, look at what you've got. Because we've got... We've had an amazing, you know, 10 year, years out of this business yeah. in the main. Um, and it has been tough and there have been sacrifices and we have had to 
bend our relationship around the business, definitely. But ultimately, yeah, he, he's, he's been all right. Tell us about the studio, because for, for a while, um, Kev had a plan to... He talks about Louis Garvin, doesn't he? He loves <laughs> Louis's work. If you haven't seen Louis Garvin's work, by the way, you have to see it. Yeah, we've got a beautiful print at home of a two hands... Yeah. A man's hand and a lady's hand stretching towards each other, and I, I love know the it. One, yeah, yeah. So, but the studio thing didn't work out, did it? Why was that? Oh, well, he's not really a portrait photographer. I don't think so. Well, he's probably going to say to me, "What do you say that for?" Um, I, I don't know. He, I mean, he was really busy, um, but it. it it's hard to build up that kind of business and that kind of business model, I think. And and just to do enough to get confident with it. He was lucky, you know, he got loads of bookings for the weddings he'd done. He got a lot under his belt in a very short amount of time. Whereas with portraits, you know, once you've done your family and then, you know, you've got to build up that business. I, I, I guess it was just that. Um, maybe he'll revisit it. Kev often says he doesn't like people. <laughs> And then no, he says it flippantly because he spends a lot of time at weddings. Yeah, but he 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 is he he's quite as um, he likes solitude, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So how does that work with his wedding shooting? Do you think thirty-five smiles a month? I think he's quite a people watcher. <laughs> yeah. He's interested in people and the emotions and 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 what makes people tick. And his kind of reaction to other people's emotions is is it's very surface with him like you said that that that's that sort of heart on sleeve thing um because he <laughs> he can't watch like anything on tv sad can't he no he watches death in paradise drives me nuts and like miss marple <laughs> and midsummer murders like he can watch a murder as long as it's a nice murder and you know it's, it's got just, a disney fight yeah yeah absolutely because he just he can't take that and so i think for him he that solitude is a little bit of protection yeah. of himself he takes himself off and away yeah. Yeah. but i think he copes with it at weddings because he is a people watcher and he is quite interested in all of the different dynamics he's not unlike a lot of photographers um that, that, that say that they don't like people, but they're great people watchers. Yeah. Yeah. I, see, yeah. I mean, you don't have to be the ringmaster to be a great photographer, I've no. always thought. No. Um, I think it will, sometimes that's worse. Mm. Well, if you're over the top and... Yeah, I think he's... Yeah, I think he's... A bit, he's, he's gone the other way with with, with wedding <laughs> photography anyway, because documentary, and he's, he doesn't want to be the you know, round em up mer- merchant ever, does he? No, and he hates to be seen as somebody who's celebrating his own success, which irritates yeah. the live in daylights out of me sometimes because yeah. sometimes I'm a little bit like all right you did good so hooray you know yeah. he never even privately will be like yeah yeah he's often said to me actually that he, he doesn't push himself forward all the time he's waiting for the invites from people to you know how yeah. some photographers um really push themselves into situations yes the ones that are searching for ambassadorial ships yeah, the willy waivers. <laughs> you can call them that. <laughs> but he's, ne- he's not like that. No. Which is, which, is, which is interesting. And I think sometimes people take that the wrong way, like he's being, I don't know, standoffish or a bit aloof, and that's, that's not true. Yeah. There's an interesting uh, story. We, we went to Bath for our wedding anniversary this year in March, and I was we'd split up, and I was in a shop waiting for for him. Not we hadn't split up. No, I was gonna, about to say this is we, revelation. Yes, <laughs> not a minute, Jeff Goldblum. I'm <laughs> ready for you. Um, no, we we'd gone our, our separate ways shopping, and he came back to meet me, and he and he was all red and flustered, and he was like, "Oh, this guy just came up to me and went, are you Kevin Mullins?' You know, and I yeah. and I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, oh, of course he did. Yeah, what was his name?" And he was like. Mm-hmm. Steve and I was like yeah Steve oh good old Steve the fan I was really (laughs) taking the mickey out of him and then literally later on we were in this restaurant having dinner uh, we were chatting away and the waitress came over and went "Uh, excuse me um, 
the chefs have just asked me to come over because they're too embarrassed. Are, are you a photographer? And he said, yeah. Are you, are you Kevin Mullins? And she <laughs> goes, yeah. <laughs> they're just massive fans of yours and they want to send you and your wife a drink because they know it's your anniversary because they follow you on social media. And I was like, oh my God, did you pay them to do that? <laughs> <laughs> and And we had this free drink and everything. And then we went on and I was like, you must be so... If that happened to me in front of him on our anniversary, I would think I was the dog's doodad (laughs) and I would be so happy. And Kev's like, just really embarrassed. It is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. Really quiet about it. I'm I'm intrigued because we haven't got that much longer. I'm I'm intrigued to what you would say to um, to a partner that is is watching their their version of Kev. Yeah. Kevet or Kev for them yeah going through this <laughs> yeah and and thinking oh I want them to do anything but this just why can't you stay in your safe insurance job or whatever it is that you do um it's tough cuz I'm really risk averse uh so I wouldn't say I'm not a like you know you've got to go out your comfort zone I'm very much more stay in your comfort zone under your duvet uh but with hindsight it's a lot of work and it's a lot it takes a lot of encouragement and it does take balls of steel sometimes and sometimes you really have to take a lot of criticism a lot of of of, of tough stuff Mm. but actually if you can find yourself a community so encourage your partner to go out find a community of like-minded photographers who are going to be supportive i know you guys get a lot from your private forums that you have and your yeah. your that, that's friends. important yeah. yeah um finding so a peer group find a peer group that's that's what i was the word i was searching for find a peer group be supportive you know and 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 really ultimately though you have to take the plunge you know i've met a lot of people through kev who have a wardrobe full of cameras and they're really good photographers and they just can't yeah take that just do it just yeah yeah see how you go you'll soon mm. find out if you don't like it don't do it anymore. I, I'm going to ask well, last question. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I have no idea how Kev's what Kev's going to ask Sam. Um, we've split these two apart, and the only time I'll get to hear it is when the edition comes out, and the only time Kev gets to hear this bit is when this edition comes out. Mm-hmm. I'm quite sure how that's technically going to work because I edit it most weeks. <laughs> but we're going to we're going to figure a way. Somebody somebody else might edit next week's. Um, so. I, th- this is really for 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 Kev. Yeah. What what do you say to to your husband to Kev about how you feel about his work and what he's done and what he's achieved and where he should go and what he should do next and uh, Wow, okay. I would say Kev I am incredibly proud of you and I think your work is beautiful. And if nothing else, our kids have the most amazing document of their childhood that you could ever wish for, which is just such a massive gift. Um, I think he should just carry on doing what he's doing. He's, he's, he, I think definitely life just takes you in the direction. I have faith now that he's built up, you know, the the skill set and 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 all of the stuff that goes around that just to let it take him where it will and at the end of the day if he wants to be a road sweeper or whatever I don't care actually it'd be quite nice to have him round on a Saturday so and or you know what I always say this to him when we're having one of our rows I just go back to work he can retire look after the kids but no I love him I think he's brilliant and I'm really looking forward to the X Weddings conference this year if he invites me he said on last time's he podcast said, said you weren't going to go yeah, didn't he rude yeah. he's a miserable old goat yeah, very he? rude I'm in charge of <laughs> gift bags <laughs> well, there we go then last year's gift bag was great so you have to go there you go otherwise we'll all end up with I don't know what, what would he give us in a gift bag packet of refreshers and packet of refreshers Johnny Cash CD and a I know, rugby it. ball or something that's it <laughs> thank you Gemma you're welcome Kev, the weird thing is here, and I'm trying to think of uh, of the way of coming out of this this interview that we've we've just well, which the listeners have heard, and now you will have heard in real time, but you haven't heard just yet. No. So does that make sense? Uh, yeah, kind of. And so I I while I'm speaking into this microphone, I've not heard it. Yeah. But when the listeners listen to me saying when I've spoken into this microphone, I've not heard it. I will have heard it. Do you think she was kind? Um, potentially. 
<laughs> All right. Well, the first time Kev gets to hear what you're currently hearing, this is where there's Twilight Zone sort of um, time travel thing going on here. Um, he will have heard it as well, but at this particular stage, he hasn't. So, there well, we go. whatever happens, I still love her. <laughs> week two next week, <laughs> and Kev asks the questions to Sam, my wife. Right. Um, coming back for this social media thing, social media journey topic almost. Um, although we don't do topics these days as such. Your questions are mini topics in themselves. But this one's from Pat. I am a known Fuji user, just a user. I've done two workshops for Fuji, but uh, I was never an ambassador. I was then contacted by a certain brand, not Fuji, to sort of connect to photographers, to do workshops, like a kind of influencer, I guess. This is Patrick Bryan. Do you know of Patrick Bryan at all? Mm, not that I can say. Okay. Uh, maybe I've come across, I don't know, I, there's a lot of names out there. All right, well, I do voluntary unboxings. I go to the distributor to borrow a unit to unbox, review the X-Series camera, and that's what I plan to do only for this non-Fuji brand. Question is, is it okay for me to do unboxings, or should I just skip it because of all my association with Fujifilm, even though I don't work or have any contract should i follow what other people perceive of me rather than expanding my new horizon towards social media journey now I've, I, it's it's i suppose it's a little bit of a confusing question but um the reason i'm reading it out is because i think a lot of people pat and I, um, don't you hate it when people say do respect by the way when somebody says do respect they hardly ever mean do respect <laughs> but but with uh, honest do respect pat i think you're over complicating yeah. the social media thing and that's why i drew this question out um, because we have a very full mailbag, which is lovely. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate it. But I thought this was important because it kind of plays into, and we've talked about this before, the social in social media. It's your favourite phrase. You coined it, I think. Remember the social in social mm. media. Yeah. And I always remember that when you say that. And I just, I wonder whether Patrick is beginning to think too much about it. If you want to do an unboxing, do an unboxing. Um, you're not an ambassador at the moment. Does it affect you? No, I don't think it does. And even if even if uh, being an ambassador in the future was on the on on the radar, it wouldn't affect you now. So yeah, absolutely. Do you know? Don't a lot of people. I say a lot. You know, I know I waffled about this quite a bit, but you know, several people kind of think that the, uh, the, uh, the the final thing they want to get to in their career is to be an ambassador. Yeah. Um, That's the other reason I brought this out, because yeah. I, I wanted to talk about this ambassador thing. And it's not. It no. shouldn't be. You know, it'd be, it's lovely, of course. Is it a pinnacle? No. No. Not at all. It's it's a thing. It's something that happens, and it's good um, for the most part. And it's, it's not something that... I, personally, I don't think it's something people should work towards. No, it shouldn't be an ambition. It's it's a bit like uh, you know. I don't believe that politicians who, if their ambition in school is to be a politician, I think that should immediately rule them out from being a politician. Mm. You shouldn't, you know, should be a working person and then be a politician. And it's the same with with photographers. If your if your ambition is to be an ambassador, what for what reason? What's yeah. what's the benefits? There's no money in it. You know, you don't get paid. It's not a uh, you know. Of course, you're going to get workshops and stuff and a little bit. Of Kudos, but only from other photographers. Mm. It's not going to get you more weddings, and you know it's the, there's a fine line between. Um, uh, and I'm not saying this about um, uh, Patrick, Patrick no. uh, at all, but there is a fine line between ego and uh, business. Yeah, simple as that. And uh, yeah, so don't just Patrick. Don't 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 overthink it. Don't worry about it. Do what do what makes you an income. I would do these unboxings, and I look yeah. forward to seeing them. Yeah, absolutely. Andrea said, who's one of the the head honchos at Fujifilm UK. Um, he, uh, I know you have a close association with him, of course, because of. of I your... photographed his wedding. Oh, you did? Of yeah. course you did. Your, yeah, yeah. your ambassadorial role. Um, but I, I was talking with him recently, not I might hasten to add because I'm becoming an ambassador. It was for um, some things um, I'm going to write for um, for some experiences I had with, with the camera. Mm -hmm. And we, we touched on this um, ambassadorial thing. Again, not because I was going, going no, no. Or, or, you know, angling for ambassadorial ship. Um, it was it was really because we were having a conversation. I think may, maybe because I, I was interested in this angle for talking about it on the Fujicast. And he said, you know, so many people contact me. Um, mm. I get, you know, you have to see, and, uh, and this is these, his words, I'm not going to get it right totally, but it, along these lines, you have to see the ambassadorial ship as, as like a marriage. 
you don't you know you need to date us first hmm. make us you know we all need to get to know each other we need to feel comfortable in each other's you know circles we, we need to know how each other eats chips <laughs> eat spaghetti that's the best way to find out about a date well i eat spaghetti very differently to the way andreas does <laughs> and, and and only then really and you can't you know you don't go out on your first date and say you know we're married no, you you date each other for a while. No, but you get, that, you, there's a courting process. That's to use what a nice I'm old fashion phrase. And that's what I'm saying. People, there are people out there, and it's only a minority, but there are people out there who think that they are entitled to being recognised, yeah. and that it's they should be fast tracked and blah blah blah. And uh, ultimately, that's it is ego, and I, I can't I can't really put it any other way. It's yeah. uh, not many people, but but they exist. And being an ambassador is a good thing, but it's certainly not something that I, I honestly believe that the harder you work at being an ambassador, the less chance yeah. you've got of being one. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. You know. Thank you for your question, Pat. Now, I wanted to be careful about that because, of course, that wasn't skewed toward um, uh, lecturing you at all. But I thought it was a really, no, no, no. really good topic. And that's why I wanted. In fact, I'll tell you what, Patrick, because I think it's a good topic. I'm You're, you're the, the camera strap winner from me this week. So. And um, that's uh, Patrick Bryan. Thank you very, very much for, for your question. And uh, one of those simpler straps will be winging its way across to you. Not sure what country you're in, actually. Hmm. Not sure. OK. Yeah. Right, yours. All right. So this is from Gwil. Gwil C. Mm-hmm. That's got to be Welsh also, I would imagine. Hi, Neil and Kevin. Love the show. Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> The nice bits Kev skips. Um, when I first started... Did he get, actually write? He wrote yada, 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 yada. yada, yada, yada. Did he? And he spelt yada, yada, yada right. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I, hence the bit that you don't usually read. I can't even spell shawadi wadi, right. let alone yada, yada, yada. Well, you can spell hua, wa, 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 we? Who are we? Who Did are I tell we? you why? No, don't do the joke again. <laughs> well, <laughs> when I first started getting into <laughs> photography, I used every camera my dad had in the cupboard. Uh, my dad had in the cupboard, from all SLRs to very old rangefinders. And uh, uh, over time, he's now with a Fujifilm X-T2, and he loves using it. Right. But there's always something that makes me want to go back to the old stuff. Here's the question. Should I ever risk buying an old camera from Japan on eBay? Uh, he's, he's from Brighton. Oh, Brighton. Gwil? We shall see oh, you, you at yeah, our are event. You at the meetup on the was it eleventh or twelfth of September? I keep needing to remember. check this. I'll check it. You check I'll... it while I carry on reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or should I pay double the price, if not more, and buy one from an English seller? The camera I'm after is a Fujifilm GW six ninety three. I'm guessing over there it's in abundance, whereas over here they are harder to find, which explains the price difference. Um, yeah, well, I, I've been to Japan a couple of times, and I, I go. I love going to the old camera stores there, secondhand camera stores, full to the brim. Of, of goodies goodies yeah mm. and i've bought some old rangefinders i bought a, a mamiya um uh, i got an old canon a1 and various other bits and pieces what mamiya did back. you buy the six seven or no 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 it's a it's a really old it doesn't have uh, it funny enough it doesn't have sorry quill we'll get back to you in a minute funny enough <laughs> it doesn't have a brand name on it and i sent oh. it i sent it to sarah jones up at cambrian cameras or sent her a picture of it because yeah. she's she's got this uh, amazing archive of old cameras she you know she knows a lot um and she didn't even she couldn't she figure couldn't out what it was it. no right. okay. uh, but it works uh, yeah. it's got this little 35 mil lens on it and stuff oh, wow. um so i don't know it could be worth thousands and thousands and thousands but i paid 85 pound for it right. um in the equivalent of yens and i've never been able to find it it's not even on the the um the mamiya um mamma mia mamma mia. <laughs> mia here i go again it's not even on their um uh, on the the camera library. Camera library, right. Yeah, okay. it's really weird. Uh, it could be a fake, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> However, so uh, the fact is, you, 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 they are in a more in abundance, as Gwil said, in Japan. Um, and I honestly, I, I don't do anything on eBay these days. And, and you know, I... <laughs> I heard some horror stories about people selling things on eBay and, you know, people saying they're lost and all sorts of stuff yeah. and buying. And yeah. I don't think you can, you know, a, a camera, especially like a GW690 or something, it's not like you can get a fake one. It's not like memory cards where you, no. you're not sure whether they're going to be real or not. No. So pretty sure it's going to be okay. So eBay uh, might be a good place for it. Yeah, in that case, you know, the market price. I mean, e- eBay yeah. is very good actually at giving you a market price Yeah. because, you know, just economics forces the price of them in, in the marketplace on eBay. So if they are, let's just say it's £300 in the UK – then that's what they're worth over here. That's that's the market. Um, you know, get on. What you could do, girl, is uh, you know, rugby world cup. Jump on a plane, hop over there, <laughs> and buy yourself a camera while you're out there. Come back. You know, 
who knows job done yeah so uh yeah we didn't really answer the question at all there i, uh, I think you did if it was me i would probably go for it if i yeah. really wanted that camera yeah. I, I would trust ebay and go for it because it can't be a fake and the brighton um get together is not the 11th or 12th it's actually the 10th i have actually bought um cards on ebay i, I must have been lucky now I've, I've got some good deals on cards oh maybe Effie Kaufman, thank you very much for your question from Israel. Um, Hello, Neil and Kevin. I wanted to ask for your take on film simulations like the ones being built into Fuji cameras and others like VSCO desktop film simulations. Although using it for a couple of years now, I'm trying to get my head around how and when to use them. Not talking about the general filters and presets, but those that uh, specifically intend to emulate the good old film days in the best way possible. I came to realise that my desire to use film simulation is twofold, but a nostalgia and a bit of a, a, a want to create a consistent appearance to my pictures. I'm a hobbyist, photography enthusiastic, uh, not a pro. Nostalgia part is well understood, I guess. The other part is is probably a way to create some kind of standard. I'm an en- Oh, he's an engineer, you see? So he wants a standard. Yeah. Um, that'll allow me to use Kodak Portra 400 as opposed to John Doe's presets that I've just downloaded. What's your take on presets? Uh, why would you want to use film simulations that might introduce colour shifts and artificial grain into your otherwise perfectly looking colour pictures? Actually, I think you may have answered the question yourself there. What do you think about that? I mean, you have your own set of presets, and they do shift the colour slightly. Yeah. Um, I know that because I've used some of yours. Yeah. Uh, you know, the thing about presets, and, and he he rightly pointed this out, is that if they, your pictures end up looking very similar to a lot of other people's. Yeah. Um, but if all the other people's pictures look beautiful, then why not make your pictures look beautiful too? So, um, I don't know. It is a tough one because, you know, you don't ever... You're never satisfied. You're never uh, one. I mean, I, as in yeah. a person who's never satisfied with the way it looks. And then there's always something. Let's just say you've got five presets, right? You you click on one, it looks good. You click on another, it looks good. Click on another, it looks good. And then you think, oh, no, now I need to decide which one. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, um, yeah, I pretty much standardized several, several but You've years made ago. your own. You haven't used VSCO yeah. or anything, have you? No, no, no. So they're, they're pretty standard. Although they are kind of backed off that old kind of film look. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't think I don't think VSCO exists anymore. I think they stopped doing that. that um, have they? Yeah, they, they stopped. They just do the mobile things now. Um, oh, I didn't realize Visco, that. as they they Yeah, they I, was, I was never sure whether it's Visco or VSCO. Um, yeah, I think they've stopped. I might be wrong, but I think they've stopped. Okay. But a lot of people used it. And also um, Tribe Leaf. Is it Tribe Leaf or whatever? Um, stuff like that. There's there's a lot of them out there. Reggie Ballesteros has some, who was on here a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Now, I've been using his, actually. I've been testing them out because mm-hmm. he gave us a link to, to test a few out. Um, I know you haven't had a chance yet, but I, I've I've used a few, and I, I thought I might do a, a mini review actually because mm-hmm. what I found I quite liked. Um, Good. Uh, they're they're I, I've always liked um, deep, rich, real colours. And Reggie, obviously, his work is um, slightly more stylized than that. Yeah. And so I found that uh, they worked extremely well for where I was a um, couple of weekends ago, which was the Gherkin in London. Now, the Gherkin, if you don't know of that building, is a huge panel glass. What's it shaped like? Uh, like a Gherkin, oh. bizarrely enough. <laughs> um, the Pickle Building. Um, and it's a huge... Well, it, it, well, it's the Pickle Building now, as we're going to call it. Uh, there's a lot of light coming in from all directions. Yeah. So actually, Reggie's presets worked reasonably well for that. They, yeah. they worked for me. But Are they JPEG or RAW presets? RAWs. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So um, I won't say any more because I wanted to do that properly. But uh, thank you, Effie, for your question. Nice Kev. one. Okay, so I, I'm going to send my drag. <laughs> I'm going to send my strap you're, you're, to this, this your dragon. <laughs> well, bear with me, um, because the first thing I read was name, yeah. and I thought it said dragons. Oh, right, that's why. Okay. Uh, yeah, but actually, uh, it says Dragos. Right. Okay. So um, that sounds like a James Bond villain. Even even before I read the question out, mm. I'm sending my strap to Dragos, Dragos. just because it, uh, I thought he was being very very uh, pro Welsh. Definitely, 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 definitely a James Bond sort of villain there, isn't it? Uh, uh, Dragos, yeah, Dragos. No, Dra- wasn't he? A, no, Dragos no, no, Tower. He was one of the baddies in um, the box in um, uh, what, was, what was the boxing film? Uh, um, Rocky. Uh, Rocky. Wasn't Dragos one of Dragos? those? Uh, Drago. I don't know. Congratulations again for the Fujicast. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was wondering whether you could recommend a photo printer for personal use Ooh. with good print quality, not necessarily fast. 
preferably for black and white photos, maximum size A4. Where do you usually print your photos, personal and clients' ones? Do you have your own printers or do you subcontract this work? From his website, I noted Kevin is working with a company called Digital Lab, but I'm not sure whether I could afford to buy one of those light jet 5000 machines they use. Right. Okay, so yeah, I use Digital Lab, which is a lab up in Newcastle, um, and they have a light jet 5000, and I've seen it, I've been up there. It's huge, yeah. and absolutely, it costs about one and a half million pounds, so it's not something Ooh. you would have in your bedroom for sure. Um, but yeah I outsource all my printing now uh, I never do anything I'd have you ever done any printing I used to do n- not albums or anything yeah. I um, uh, that's all done by Jorgensen albums um, I used to have a, a Canon <sighs> what are they called those big printers with like 12 ink oh I know boxes. I know the one you mean because I had one for a little while just sitting on the side over there that I was I was babysitting for a friend yeah I had and it, it was brilliant the quality was superb superb quality Loved absolutely it. but really expensive mm. and if you didn't use it the inks dried up and you had to buy more ink and the inks were the, the inks used to cost 400 pounds mm. so um, I ditched that and uh, no I don't do anything I don't have to do any printing so I'm probably not the best person to to, to talk about I, I mean honestly Drake I would say that whatever printer you get, it's going to be cheaper to send it off to a lab. You know, there's labs that do um, cheap, expensive, big, small. It's just going to be cheaper. Yeah. I'm fairly sure. I'm really happy with the quality I get from Loxley. Yeah, Loxley. Love the, the, the quality. Yeah. Never had an issue with it. I don't think I – I can't remember a client ever questioning – a print no I really can't I don't know Dragos whether oh uh, 0034 what um, country code is that 0034 mm. it's not us no, no. we're 44 four. we're 44 four. sorry yeah yeah 0034 I do know this is Quick that Spain I don't know alright 0034 country code darling code there we go is Spain. Spain. Great. You should know that because you spend your summer out I, there. I know, but I never phone. Right. I don't have a phone out there. Uh, Dragos, so uh, Dragos in Spain. Right. Um, I, I don't know then. <laughs> I don't know any printing <laughs> companies out there. Um, there will be some, of course. And uh, So your, your suggestion is really consider finding yourself a professional print shop. Um. Yeah. In, in a span, yeah. and if it's just for your own personal, you know, it kind of snaps at home, you know, uh, just a kind of inkjet, laser jet yeah. type thing would be good enough. It depends what you want to do with it. But if it's anything for clients, honestly, I would just suggest getting it outsourced. Right, let's go for this week's uh, self-indulgent moment, then we'll come back for uh, another question or two. Two great photographers touching on all sorts of interesting subjects. What I love most is they are both very good at what they do, very knowledgeable, but also very humble. The best combination, and that's from Kalura. <laughs> Tim Cassidy, just wanted to say I love the podcast so far. Please keep up the fantastic content. Only recently started out as a wedding photographer. I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed, to say the least. Each of the topics you guys have been covering has really hit the spot. All the best, Tim. I've been listening to the Futurecast for some weeks and it gets better and better. Highly recommended. (laughs) Kit in Canada. Kit in Canada. Kit in Canada. Um, Insightful, well-organised and very enjoyable. Uh, two, a, a very insightful podcast hosted by two inspiring photographers. Chemistry between the two is spot on. I mean, hang on, I'm not taking him on a date. <laughs> Thank you, Siraj Mustafa. Top quality photography podcast going from strength to strength each episode. Not just brand type specific, as has, has, has enough for all types of shooters. Top blokes who don't fill the hours with nonsensical droning rubbish. Only gripe would be that they are too <laughs> short. Uh, well, actually, Neil's a bit taller than yeah, me. Yeah, I'm five foot. Uh, well, I'm five foot ten. Let's up those minutes. Subscribe, you won't regret it. And that's from DK Desire. DK Desire. When I grew up, I want to be called DK, DK Desire. DK Desire. That is a name. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank well you for your reviews. Please keep leaving them. Uh, they are really, really important to us. Um, and uh, well, they, they well, it's, it's nice to read the nice stuff, but equally, be absolutely honest. If you've got something to say and a bit of feedback to give, then uh, send it to another podcast. Thanks very much. <laughs> right. Okay. Questions. Um, was it me or you? You. You, it you. I just did Dragos and uh, uh, okay, Dragos gets a strap. Um, all right. Okay. Well, um, I've got a question, but let me just. Uh, I've got an Alan Gump moment. He should really have a jingle, shouldn't he? Really. Yeah. Sorry, gents. I can't resist, but uh, I'm just correcting you. The Los Angeles freeway hell realm. I like that freeway hell realm is widely considered to be the I-405 not Route 66 yeah. which is famous for other reasons of course having uh, an iconic TV show included in that from the, from the 60s Great. I, knew, I knew it when we said it Yeah, I knew it when we Ooh, said it I thought that Alan yeah. you're going to be in a, you're going to be in, in a gump moment <laughs> great show this week oh this is from a couple of weeks ago especially enjoyed hearing Alistair's Are We There Yet project as well as your individual dream projects that was um, that was good idea for a project, by the way. If you, uh, there's a couple of weeks back when we had Alistair Freeman on the show, 
Yeah. And we were talking about personal projects, and his one was uh, a travel one, wasn't it, called Are We There Yet, which I thought was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But one listener asked a truly poignant question in relation um, to the Don McCullen Tate exhibition. Specifically in the face of such work, how can our photos ever have any value? Your answer was sensitive and thoughtful. Um, so sensitive, Kev, I can't remember what you said now. But uh, obviously the McCullen episode has struck many nerves in your audience, so please s- keep this sort of uh, content coming. I, I mean, I was incredibly moved by that exhibition, I've got to say. It was, uh, yeah, but, absolutely. And, and I did come away thinking, oh, God, what have, what have I got for the... Mm-hmm. It goes back to that imposter syndrome uh, thing, doesn't it, really? Uh, anyway, Seth Bates. Hello, gents. Firstly, I must say you guys are a joy to listen to, and I hope this podcast continues long into the future. I have a question regarding health. I thought it was very interesting because um, we have had a few emails of late saying, oh, it's just about weddings. Now, this is slightly about weddings, but actually, if, if, you, <laughs> if you're a jobbing photographer, if you're walking the streets doing street or weddings or whatever, um, then this, this could well apply. So there's two questions, uh, really. I, sh- I shot a wedding this past Saturday here in Switzerland, lasting around 14 hours, 14 hours. At the end of the night, I felt destroyed. I always put 100% into each gig and wonder if I should let, wonder if I should let off the gas a little due to feeling like I've been run over uh, by a bus the, the following day. I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. I have no idea as to how photographers say they do multiple weddings day after day after day within a week. The toll it takes on the body is intense. So there's two, two questions here. First of all, Kev, do you have any tips in survival health-wise? <laughs> Well, we've already established, I think, in this podcast that Kev takes the bath for two hours the next morning. <laughs> yeah, but um, honestly, 14 hours. Uh, ooh, it's a long way, isn't it? A long that's time. A long Mind you, there'll be nurses, uh, maybe, listening to this podcast that would say, wait a minute, 14 yeah, hours, yeah, yeah. luxury. Yeah, no, I get that. Um, um, just, yeah, I mean, honestly, a little bit of exercise during the week helps a lot. Keep yourself fit. Mm drink a lot of water uh, you often hear people talk about wedding hangover wedding photographer hangover on a Sunday yes, and, yes. oh I've got a headache and that and I used to get that when I first started and uh, and I know what it was it was basically you weren't drinking enough water it was a couple of things it was because I was sweating so much yeah. mostly through anxiety and yeah. nerves right. and it's the summer and I'm dressed up like a, a wedding guest and yeah. run, but still running around working my, my little uh, thing off and Mullins butt not, not drinking anywhere near enough water All right and so I always had a what felt like a hangover the next day. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a lot of water and um, yeah. I mean, I, I I don't feel I don't feel like a wedding these days is a physical exertion like it used to be. And, and obviously, I'm now using smaller cameras than I used to. But saying that, you know, I don't think it's much to do with that. I think it's it's a, a, a and also remember it's a lot of people do end up overshooting a lot, you know, and just relax a little bit you know just just kind of slow down take it all in do what you need to do don't don't always think that you need to be taking pictures no. um and you what know. do you do when I, I often wonder what other photographers do at those moments where you think i should be looking busy now what um because you can't constantly be on that button because i think it it, it it's unnerving i think for guests for well, a start and, and I don't think you're necessarily returning anything of great quality. No, I, I, either. Honestly. So what do you do? Uh, well, I these days, I mean, it's absolutely not true that every picture I take is one that's going to be kept for sure. No. But I definitely will not stand and take pictures just to look like I'm t- taking pictures. Yeah. If I don't think there's anything to be photographed, then I will, and I won't just stand there staring. I will, you know, maybe I'll move to another part of the room. I'll mm-hmm. go out. Uh, for example, on Saturday's wedding, um, there it was a relatively small wedding, forty odd guests, something like that. Um, they had an hour's drink reception in a pretty small space, and so I would go in, I would wander around, and then I'd go out for ten minutes, and yeah. I would just go outside and you know just wait because not because uh, you know there was nothing happening but because the guests the 40 odd guests you need to give them a bit of space you need to give them space yeah, yeah. Uh, they don't want to feel like they're being paparazzi no they want to feel like they're at a wedding yeah um, so yeah just kind of that I, I know good what you shoes mean. though good shoes good that's, shoes that's really important DMs for me good shoes I don't though. mean those DMs that, that look like you know green wellies <laughs> no I mean they, they do some nice range of shoes mm-hmm. now that look quite smart um, I was at a wedding, funnily enough, um, in the same sort of vein, really, uh, not not a large, large wedding, at a pub. And uh, I was doing that 
I mean, it was very hard to go find somewhere else to stand. And somebody came up to me and said, you look confused. And I thought, this is probably time for me to go and find somewhere else yeah. just for the next 10 minutes. <laughs> secondly, from Seth, secondly, I had um, the flu during this event, but I had to go there due to there being no other option available. You know what's coming up with this question. Yeah. Do you have any backup plans in case of illness or accidents? Any advice would be amazing. So I'm going to suggest straight away that you... We talked about um, having peer groups being important in the past and collectives and so on and so forth and having like-minded individuals whose work you admire um, that follow a similar pattern and path to your own. Um, form some relationships with them, mm-hmm. um, you know, collab with them, if you like, as, as, as is the, the phrase these days. Collaborate. Have people there that would be pleased to, uh, you know, pick up the phone and say, yep, I can help you out this weekend. Hmm. That's what I would suggest. Yeah. I, I, I think the magazines must have been putting out their annual questions to ask a photographer article <laughs> recently because pretty much all my inquiries recently have all said, what would happen if yeah. you were sick? Yeah. Um, yeah. So You can send back a grumpy answer. What would happen if your vicar was sick? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, always, I, I often say to them, well, what would happen if you were sick? Ooh. And they always say... Nicely turned. They always say, well, I'd have to be really, really, really unwell not to go to my own wedding. And I say... There we go. Same thing. That's a very good answer. Hmm. I like that one. Right, yours. Okay, so this is from Stu. Um, Stuart Weir. Hi, Neil and Kevin. Stu here from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And there's a little Canadian flag with it. We do well in Canada. We yeah. should move to Canada. Because yeah. I, li- I like the sound of Canada for a start. First up, really love the podcast. By the way, that was my elbow. That <laughs> <laughs> that really was. I'm trying to do it again. Honestly. Look. I'm not going to edit that out. But I can't do it again. Oh, what's that smell? <laughs> no, don't do that. That was my elbow. <laughs> Childish. All right, I'm going to have to start again. Then. Go on. Then. Hi, Neil and Kevin. Stu here from Vancouver. Beep, beep. Second take. <laughs> First up, really love the podcast. Um, although it's been said by many, very good, etc., etc. I have a few. Oh, you're questions. so funny. You don't like reading out the first. <laughs> I have a few questions. It is very nice. I have a few questions regarding a bit of a range of topics. I mainly shoot street photography using all three Fujicrons, but have recently uh, been trying to up my portrait photography skill set, whether that's posed or candid. Do you have any tips for looking at the right framing based on focal length? Mm. That's one question. My second question is specific to the XF 35mm lenses. As you can tell from my previous question, I have the F2 lenses, but I've just heard so many wonderful things about the 1.4. Do either of you have any preference on one way or the other? If so, why? And there is a third question, but let's answer those two first. Wow. Um, so do you have any tips for looking for the right framing based on focal length? When I do portraits, and um, if I'm doing portraits you know, of kids or whatever, or professionally, which I don't do very many of, I all I do is look in terms of the the, f- the focal length and decide if it makes their nose look too big mm-hmm. or their ears look too wide or something. Mm-hmm. So if it doesn't look natural, then I know I'm using the wrong wrong focal length. Uh, Thirty five mil seems perfect for me though yeah. for that kind of thing. Um, Get out of jail card lens. That yeah, one. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, interestingly, on my Huawei, 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 do you know why they call it Huawei? <laughs> Who are we? Uh, um, if you, the closer you get to the, um, you need a jingle for every time you say that. The subject it really does elongate their faces. Yes. Um, so <laughs> uh, the second question is the 35 mil f2, which he has, uh, which Stu has, and do we prefer the 1.4? Basically. Mm. Mm. Mm, I actually don't use 35 mils at all. I have both. So effective 50 mil focal length. Correct, yeah. 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 I, I, I don't have mine anymore. Uh, really? No. Nope. Uh, I, I do have them, and I have used them in the past. Um, but I, t- I just... I use 23 and the 56 mm. more mm. than anything. Um, however, I would still say that the 35 1.4 gives a, a more beautiful image. Uh, even if you're shooting that at f2, it's, yeah. it has a nicer render into it, I think. And that's because it's so one of the, the f2 lenses. has no, no the, the f1.4. The f1. Sorry, yeah, yeah the okay. older, and that was one of the first. That was that one was of the, the first the, gen lens, isn't it? The first, the, the tree, the, the tree. I tried to say Trinity, the, <laughs> the Trinity of lenses that launched at the, the same time as the X Pro 2. Yeah, sorry, the X Pro 1 was the 60 mil 2.4, 35 1.4, and the 18 mil f2. Um, and all three of those lenses are still, you know, really cool. Yeah. 
And the last and final question is, could you do an episode on Flash and Fuji wedding photography? Uh, no. <laughs> no, he does He does go on to say, I know that it's not Kevin's style, um, but if I wanted to get into wedding photography one day, I don't think I'd have enough to fund a Fuji Lux trio. Yeah. Uh, wondering how to use Flash, uh, what white balance settings and must-have kit, etc., etc. And it's a very valid point, just because yeah. I don't really use it, we should um, we should perhaps think why, about why it. Why don't we have somebody on the show who really knows about Flash? Yeah, um, do you have any friends? Mm, no. Uh, yeah, do we, we should get circles? we should get Marianne on. Uh, Marianne, ciao. Would she, she would, would she do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She knows everything. Of course she does. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah. The, 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 yeah. That's a very good idea. We do. I mean, I'm very basic with the way I use Flash. It's either on TTL or or. Um, or, or I'm dragging the the shutter. That that that's about it. I have um I have all my flash cameras put on um, off mode. <laughs> I thought you might do. Right, that's it for another week. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, oh, hold on, I need my payoff thing because I keep forgetting to to thank people properly. So I've written it down. Oh, Here we go. Well done. Oh, we should have. By the way, you know what we forgot to do earlier when Gemma was in? She didn't do her payoff. She wanted she to wanted do that. She wanted to do her pay- well. payoff, and she didn't do the payoff. I'll do it at home. Right. Okay. So thank you for your questions this week. Lifeblood of the show. <laughs> uh, we can't shovel coal into that firebox unless you fire those questions in. As we said earlier on, though, please send them in to click at fujicast.co.uk. Don't do not do them via the comments. Well, it's lovely to receive your comments on the website, but send them via the email, click at fujicast.co.uk. Um, Gemma, of course. Uh, thank you to Gemma for being our guest today. And by the time you hear this, Kev will have heard it as well. Uh, big love to our friends at Simpler Straps for letting us give away that camera strap. Um, you can go to simpler.us, S I M P L R.us. Music from Blue Wednesday. Right, payoffs. It's going to have to be Rosa, isn't it? Yeah. Come on, our Rosa. My dad's Instagram is Kevin Mullins Photography. See his films on YouTube at Documentary Eye. His website is kevinmullinsphotography.co.uk. Or for street workshops, training, and everything Fujifilm, go to f16.click. And for me, it'll be Jack. My dad's Instagram is Neil James. See his films on YouTube at Neil James Photo. His website is neiljames.com for pictures and one-to-one mentoring and you can hear his other photography podcast which is called breathe pictures wherever you get your podcasts and we will see you next week bye-bye, bye-bye. bye-bye.